Okay, we're back and we're still talking about factoring polynomials and we're just working through some examples that show the thought process of factoring out a common factor from each of the terms. So here's our next example. 8x cubed minus 3x squared. Okay, the 8 and the 3 don't have any common factors. But this has an x squared in it, and I see an x squared right here. So I'm going to factor out the x squared. And I ask myself, if I take an x squared out of this, and that means if I divide this thing by x squared, what's left? Or another way of saying the same thing, or another way of asking the same question, is asking, what do I need to multiply x squared by to give me that? And that might be a little bit more clear. Multiply x squared by what to give you that? Well, x squared multiplied by 8x would give me 8x cubed. So that's the first part of my other factor. And then I have my minus sign. This next one will be easier. We multiply x squared by what to give us 3x squared? Well, clearly we have to multiply it by 3. And again, you can check by distributing. 8x squared, I'm sorry, x squared times that 8x gives us this 8x cubed. And x squared times that 3 will give us this 3x squared. Okay, the next one is 8x cubed plus 4x squared. Okay, the 8 has a factor of 4 in it. The 8 can be 4 times 2. So I'm going to factor a 4 out of that and out of this term. And both of these terms have an x squared. I see x squared right there. There's also an x squared in that. This x cubed here is x squared times x. So I can factor out a 4 and an x squared. And then I ask myself, what do I need to multiply 4x squared by to give me that? Well, 4x squared times 2 and times x will give me 8x cubed. And then I have this plus sign. And then I say, what do I need to multiply 4x squared by to give me that? Well, those are the same. I just multiply by 1, 2x plus 1. So these are the two factors, this and this. I've taken my original expression and written it as two factors. And here's the check. Distribute the 4x squared. 4x squared times 2x is 8x cubed. And 4x squared times 1 is 4x squared. So that works. OK, next one here. 25x squared plus 20x minus 15. Okay. Well, there's an x squared here, and there's an x there, but there's no variable here. So I can't factor a variable out of every single term. I need to find a factor that's common to all three of those terms. And looking at these numbers, you can probably see that it would be 5. So let's factor out a 5. And we ask ourselves, what do we need to multiply 5 by to give us that? And you can probably see that it would be 5x squared. So even now, you can check this in your mind. You can imagine distributing the 5 times the 5x squared, and yes, you would get that. Then I have a plus sign. Now, what do I need to multiply this 5 by to give me the 20x? Well, I need to multiply by 4, because 5 times 4 gives me the 20, and then I still need an x. And again, distribute 5 times 4x gives me 20x. And then what do I need to multiply the 5 by to give me 15? And that would be 3. Or you could ask yourself, what do I need to multiply the 5 by to give me a negative 15? And that would be a negative 3. And we'll close our parentheses. OK. All right, next example, 12a squared 
plus 8ab plus 20a. Okay, well all of these are even numbers, so I know I can factor a 2 out from each of these, the 12, the 8, and the 4, but if I look more closely, I realize not only are all of those multiples of 2, they're multiples of 4. So I can factor out a 4, and then I see an a squared here, an ab, and an a, and I realize there's at least an a in every single one of those, so I can also factor out an a. So it's going to be 4a times something. And in general, you want to factor out the largest possible factor you can that all of the terms have in common. So I didn't just stop at factoring out the 4. I want to factor out the 4a. Factor out every, everything that you can factor from each of the terms or from all of the terms. So now here's my thought process. 4a times what gives me 12a squared? Well, if I multiply the 4 times the 3, that will give me the 12. And multiply this a times another a, that will give me the a squared. So it's 3a. 4a times 3a gives me the 12a squared. And then I have a plus. Now 4a times what will give me 8ab? Well, the 4 times a 2 will give me that 8. I have an a here, so that's going to end up right there when I multiply again. And I need a b. And you can check this in your head here. 4a times 2b. 4 times 2 is 8. And then I have the a times the b. And then I have a plus sign again. 4a times what gives me 20a? Well, that would just be 5. 4a times 5 is 20a. So there it is, two factors, this one and that one. One of those factors is a trinomial, but that's okay. I have taken my original expression and I have broken it up into two pieces that when multiplied together will give me the original expression. So those two pieces are factors of the original expression and I have factored it by finding those. Okay. One more, 3x squared y squared minus 9x squared y plus 15xy squared. What do all of these terms have in common? Well, if I look at the 3 and the 9 and the 15, I notice, I notice that all of those are multiples of 3, so I know I can factor a 3 out from every term. I have an x squared here and here. I have a single x there, so I can't factor out an x squared, but I can factor out an x from each term. So I'll put an x here, and then I see a y squared, a y, and a y squared. Again, I don't have a y squared in every term because this one in the middle is just a single y, but I can get a y from each of these three terms, so I do. So 3xy, and then I put my parentheses. 3xy times what will give me 3x squared y squared, and it's pretty clear that we need an xy right there. Now 3xy times what will give me 9x squared y? Well, I need a 3 because when I distribute here, 3 times 3 will give me a 9. I have an x right here. I'm going to need to get an x squared. So I need one more x down here. And I have a y right there. So I'm fine. 3x. And you can see if I distribute here, the 3 times 3 would give me the 9. The x times the x gives me the x squared. And I have the y. So that's good. And then I have a plus sign. 3xy times what gives me 15xy squared? Well, 3 times 5 is going to give me 15. And I already have an x, so I don't need another, but I need one more y. And that's it. And if I distribute here, 3xy times 5y, sure enough, that's 15xy squared. So that's it. 
these are the two factors of my original expression. And that wraps it up. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope you have learned a lot.